of um, prophesy um, in, in team. Okay, prophesy. Um, it says in, in 1 Corinthians 14, verses 29 to 33 and verse 40. It, it speaks about everything must be done decently and in order. Okay? And when one speaks, there should be another one that confirms the word. Alright? So, I want you to say that if you... If you are um, continuing to prophesy, and you're continuing to prophesy without there being any support or without there being any backup, you are headed in the wrong direction. And your um, the ministry or the calling, the, the that which God has placed within you in terms of the prophetic is, is going to be shipwrecked. <laughs> Okay, why? Because um, there's very often a tendency in prophetic ministry to be very independent. And prophets, they hear from God, prophetic people hear from God, and they think, you know, well, I can give a prophetic word without anybody knowing about it, without anyone, um, I don't need to be submitted to anyone. And for your own good, I want to say today, for your own good, you need to learn to work within the structures of the local church or the structures of the Bible school or the structures that God has put around you. Okay? And this will keep you accurate. This will keep your word accurate. Okay? This will keep you from getting into error. This will also enable you to grow stronger in the prophetic word. God will give you more. I, I have seen in um, my years of ministry that those that are not working with a team, those that are not working in, in um, submission, um, those that are not accountable, um, those are the ones um, that eventually... Um, the character, okay, can't hold the gift that God has put within them. Because, you see, um, flowing in the prophetic is not just about having a good word. Flowing in the prophetic is about having the character to sustain the gifting. That's very, very, very important. So, uh, if you're working... In, in a local church and um, your pastor says to you today I don't want you to prophesy you must be able to um, obey and submit because you see you're showing him that character is more important than gifting and, and, and you'll be known only for your gifting only as strong as what your character is. You see, I, I want to say you can prophesy for years and years and years, all right? But if you're involved um, and you're doing some secret stuff on the sideline, okay, eventually two things will happen. God will allow you to be exposed. Why? Because he has to protect his people. And secondly, your character will not be able to hold the, the weight of the gifting. Does so everybody understand that? So many times what we're doing is um, the prophetic ministry is a very sensational ministry. And today every single one of you prophesied here and everyone was accurate, everyone had a word. Okay, and you can continue and you can continue to move in the sensation of it. But if you don't have the foundation, and th this is why it's so important where Paul is saying here, you know, he says, let the prophet speak two or three and let them judge. 
and your wives that it's for your protection and it's for those that are receiving the word. <coughs> so e every word was spoken here today in, um, you know, um, in the midst of all, 200 people here and everyone was listening, everyone was hearing and I, I'm sure, you know, th those that um, are prophets and you've been using the gift, you could hear by listening to everyone's word whether the word was off or whether the word was on. You can discern it, you see. So, um, God used you to encourage, He used you to build up and, and that's what prophetic is, is about. But it has to be ministered within, um, I like to say, the right governmental structures. So, we, we have, as I shared um, about my friend, okay, who's a politician and we are working with it. So before we um, started working with it, she would go to all these different prophets. And eventually she became so confused and there was nobody to administer that word. There was nobody to cover it. There was nobody to protect it. So instead of moving in the direction that God had told her to move. She couldn't move in that direction. Why? Because she wasn't allowing the gift to be governed correctly. So in moving in our, our um, prophetic flow, God wants us um, to be in a place where we allow the gift to be governed. Okay. So, if you've got a strong gift and, and um, your, your church doesn't allow that gifting, you're not in a, a church where they recognize prophetic ministry and they recognize it, it's no good you really stay in there, in that church. Because you're not going to develop, you're not going to grow. Okay. And um, God wants to use your gift. He's anointed you and that's the wonderful thing about the Bible school here is the leadership are open to you growing and, and developing. And, um, you know, the full gospel church is open to you growing and developing. Okay? But it, it has to be within governmental structures. Okay? So, um, I have a, um, a person that I know very, very well. Okay? Um, and he has a very, very strong gift. And he started being part of our teams many years ago. And um, he would just prophesy over everyone, you know, he would stop people in the passage, he'd stop them out in the parking, he'd stop them wherever. <laughs> and he would just prophesy. And eventually we said to him, look, that's not the way we do it here. Because there's nobody to weigh the word and there's nobody to judge the word. But he had very, very, really has a strong gift. So he became offended and he left our teams. He went to another church and he did the same. And he, the pastor said, no, that's not the way we do it here. He left the church. Mm -hmm. Today he hasn't even got a ministry. Mm -hmm. So, um, you see, if he had a, obeyed the oversight, because when we submit to governmental structures, God has given um, leadership the wisdom to be able to um, look after you and guide you and work with you. Okay, so you have to build trust. There has to be a level of trust. Why am I here today? Because of trust. You see, so um, trust comes through submission. And trust comes through um, working together. So, if you observe these principles, you'll maintain the credibility of prophetic ministry. And you'll main, maintain your own credibility. I know people who are far more anointed than me. I, I, I know, that, I mean, they've got a far stronger word of knowledge than me. But they're not in any place that I'm in. Why? Because they can't submit and they, they, you know, they use cannons. 
and so the, you know, God, God tests our character, you see. And so you can't actually call on them for credible prophetic word. Because they don't believe in the local church, and I promote the local church, and then you'll have them prophesying, oh, well, the Lord is telling you to leave the church. You know, and here I'm the one who believes in the local church. Okay, so you also protect yourself from deception, being deceived. Because we get into a place where we think, oh, the word is greater than what I am. <laughs> no, the word is only as great as your character. Okay, um, and uh, we have to ask ourselves, okay, and um, how much detail is are we going to allow God to use us in? Because you see, I want to say that the the people are drawn to detail, people are drawn to sensationalism. Okay, people are drawn to um, they want to know dates, they want to know times, they want to. No, you know. But if there's too much emphasis on detail, okay, and as I said just now, we can miss the word. So how do we how do we develop detail? You have to be able to develop the word of knowledge. Now, does everybody know Sean Boltz here? Yeah. Sean Boltz is in or in, is in the United States, Sean Bolt's Ministries, and he is, he is being spoken about at this time as being, um, you know, one of the, well, the leading modern day prophet. Okay. And what Sean Bolt has done is he's developed his word of knowledge. He can tell you dates, he can tell you times, he'll call people forward, what he does is he prays before the meeting and he'll get the name of somebody and he'll get a few details, okay? So he will say, well, um, is there a jack in the congregation? The person comes forward and he says, I was praying over you today and I saw the name of the street and I saw your telephone number and I saw all these things. And people sit absolutely amazed. Yeah. Okay, because of um, the revelation that he has. Okay, and there's nothing wrong with that revelation. Okay, it's drawing, it's drawing a lot of attention to the prophetic. Okay, and God is is using him to speak to world leaders. All right, and 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 he's using him to develop um, and to um, uh, encourage people that they can flow in that kind of level of ministry. Okay, he's using, the, using him to encourage them. Okay, but he didn't get there on his own. You see, God can't trust him and wouldn't be able to trust him to be uh, 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 on the forefront of the prophetic in the nations. Okay. If he wasn't working with a very strong team, because he wouldn't be able to sustain that kind of ministry and the demand, he's got great. He's in great, great, great demand. See, so um, you can have a person who flows in that kind of detail, but they can be living a terrible life, and then what happens is. When you are constantly working with that person, you're constantly um, going to them for prophecies, and eventually they become deceived, and you become deceived. So these are the, the hidden things about prophecy, and and um, I want to say, flowing in prophetic ministry is not easy to maintain a credible record over many years because the devil will throw everything at you. <laughs> so we have to decide right from the beginning, okay, what are we going to allow God to do with us? And you'll go through seasons where 
the enemy brings stuff against you and you're dealing with stuff that you never ever thought you would ever have to deal with. But are you going to press through in those seasons? You see, what is more important? Is it the gift? Is it character? Or is it serving Jesus? You see, we're here to serve Jesus. We're here to minister. We're here to bless. We're here to expand the kingdom of God. That's the whole thing. Okay. Then the second thing. Now, we have to ask ourselves, how much detail must be revealed in the Word? Okay. So, um, I look at somebody and, and I see that um, they're doing certain things that aren't right. Is it right for me to publicly say, well, you know, you, on the 29th of April, you robbed the bank, and you <laughs> did this and that and that. There's no honor in this. And so you have to decide now, do you want to be known for all that detail, but yet the person feels so exposed and they feel so ashamed, or do you want to be known for the honor that the prophetic word brings in the person's life. You see, Jesus, he, he walked in his ministry, honored others. Even if he rebuked them, it was still with honor. It was the jolly Pharisees that he rebuked. But they needed it because of the spirit that they operated. You see, a person who's um, who wants to live a good life, but yet they beset with all these kind of things, Jesus is not going to say to them, you know, you sin and be cast into hell, like he did with the, you know, how did he treat the woman at the well? He said, you not only had one husband, you had five husbands. And he gave her a chance to repent. And it's the same with the prophetic flow. Um, there has to be redeeming um, qualities in the word. Does it, does it draw the person back to God? One, two, does it leave them with a sense of honor? Does it leave them with a sense of wanting to um, um, you know, continue with life? And, and these, these are all the things that you have to decide that these are the things you will be faced with and, and you know, is, is prestige more um, important to you than servanthood? Because that's really what we are, we're servants. We're here to serve one another. We're here. What you did this afternoon is you served these people. And you served them beautifully. So those who received the word, give the others a clap, please. A clap and thanks, amen. If, you, if you're not appreciative, don't clap. <laughs> but if you really are, just at the end of the meeting, just thank them and, and just, because many of them, it's the first time. So, is the emphasis on detail? What is the emphasis on? Okay, are there any questions before we finish? Now I will prophesy. Are there any questions? Don't be um, feel ashamed um, if you want to. Okay, would you come forward? So. Praise God. So when you receive a prophecy and uh, you have been longing for it and uh, you have received several words to confirm the prophecy and you have not seen it, what are you supposed to do in order to actualize this prophecy? Okay, so you are 
this is what happens in certain African countries. Um, um, and, you know, this is something we're dealing with in our nation at the moment, okay? It's because you've got the true prophetic, but then you've also got this, this side ra raising up and rising up. And, and um, I've had to pray and just um, really look at this whole thing. And, and I've come to the conclusion why they do that is because there's, there's many reasons, okay? Um, it, they manipulate people to give um, because, you see, ministry and flowing in the prophetic um, is a very, there's a lot of power involved. And unless you really have a heart for people um, and really want to serve people, you will draw on the power side of the gift and the power side of the, the position. Okay. And so um, I could quite easily tell at Albert, I want to serve an amount of mon money this weekend. But I've never, I've never in, in 40, 35 years of ministry, I've never ever said, um, I want this amount of money. Because, you see, I'm not in it for the power. I'm in it for people to be set free. I'm in it to glorify God. I'm in it for the kingdom of God to be released in people's lives. So we as leaders, we have to warn our people against this type of ministry. We have to start teaching, and this is what we're doing in South Africa now, is we're teaching, we're starting to um, warn and we're starting to expose. Because you see, um, these, these prophets will give good words, but their lives are in total disarray. And, and, and you know, we have poor people in Africa that have to give their life savings for one word. So as ministers, you've got to warn now. You've got to start to... Um, and, and it's not going to be easy because there's a culture involved here. There's a whole culture involved. And it's, it's, it's happening in the United States as well. It's, it's starting to become worldwide now. And, and the, true, the t true prophets have to st stand up and, and we have to warn our people. This, this is not according to scripture. Jesus didn't go around asking for money. That's right. That's right. It's not scriptural. It's, it's Jesus, freely have we been given. Right. Freely have we received. Freely do we give. Yeah. And so this is why I say, um, wherever you come from, if your culture is not... Um, lining up with the word of God, then you, we've got to make a stand. So as a leader today, you shouldn't allow that kind of person in your ministry. You've got to say no more. Okay, now what was the second question? <laughs> People who run after prophecy. The Bible doesn't say run after prophecy. It says run after God. And if you're going to run after prophecy, you actually put in the prophet before the Holy Spirit. Because you see, Jesus didn't um, go down to hell and, and the veil was rent in two for us to keep going to the prophet. He went to hell and the veil was rent into, was divided, that we could come into the throne room to hear God for ourselves Amen. first. Amen. So it, this is, it creates this dependency. And, 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 and I want to say um, tonight as a leader that people will put you in a position where they are dependent on you yeah. to hear for them. And you've got to, you've got to um, be warned about that. Yeah. Jesus went in...
this, this, this uh, training session today is to teach you and to help you grow in the gifting. Not to teach you that people should be dependent on you. And, and we can get to that position as ministers where everyone phones us 24 hours a day wanting a word, a word, a word. And if we're not in prayer, and if we're not in fasting, and if we're not before the throne room of God, we'll allow this culture to develop. And eventually the enemy will take us out. Does that help you? Okay, so we as ministers have to start teaching on these things. And, and you know, this is, the, this is the problem with prophetic ministry because we open ourselves, like today we've opened this to this forum now to be taught and everything. Um, and there's a danger in this because now people will continually come back and say to Ed Albert and Sally and, and Gina and the leaders here, well, I want a word, I want a word, I want a word. Yeah. Yeah. And there has to be a balance, you see. Everything has to be balanced. What well, have you heard from God first? Okay. If we've developed our, our um, if we've developed our spirit man, we've developed our walk with God, we will hear God. And then we trust God to bring confirmation to that word. All right. Okay, let's just pray. Father, we thank you tonight. We just thank you for your presence here, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you that, Lord, you continue to speak. And thank you, Jesus. We thank you for each one. We just honor you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. Um. I get that there's somebody here and um, you are you, you're about to go or in for an op or you, you've been to the doctor this week and he's recommended that you go for some kind of surgery or, or you're about to be booked into a hospital or something like that. Or you think, is that you? Good, okay. All right, it's the gentleman as well as the back. So, okay. 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 All right, so let's just believe, uh, believe God that the Lord just um, gives our sister wisdom. Okay, in this, and thank you, God. Father, we just thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, and and um, yeah, I just see that the Lord is saying, don't fear the outcome of this. Amen. Don't fear. I feel that you are going to go through this up, and and it's not going to take away from your femininity. It's not going to take away from your future. In fact, God is going to use it to really build and he's going to really use it to bless you. Amen. And and um, just know that um, uh, everything is in God's hands. Amen. And you can trust the outcome of this. You can trust that. So I feel the Lord is just saying, don't, don't delay it. Don't delay it. Okay. Um, you can trust. I see the surgeon's hands and I see them being blessed. And, and this because um, your body is under the strain of this, okay? And, and um, it's like when, when this thing is removed, your cells will be much healthier. And, and, yeah. Okay, so Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for your hand upon me, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay. All right. Your name is Rick. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you for Rick tonight. And Lord, we just thank you that 
you have so much more um, for him to do. I mean, God has really blessed your hands. He's anointed your hands. I see that you're the kind of person that can do many things at once, okay? And I see a lot more responsibility in the kingdom of God. Um, I somehow see that um, there's going to come some kind of promotion in ministry for you, okay? And I feel that you're not going to be in the place where you're at for a long time. Um, God is stirring you up about some things and He's dealing with you um, and you know He's He's showing you that there's there's new doors that are gonna open. Okay, so be bold and just take that step and, and you'll see that as one door closes another opens and um, there's because he's wanting to lift your responsibility in the kingdom. Okay, all right, good. Okay, so God didn't say anything about his up there. So what, why, why did the Lord show us that there's, God used that as the contact point to bring? <laughs> okay, see, the, the, God knows what, how I, he must minister to his people. He knows the people. Okay, thank you, Lord. Uh, there's somebody who's got some kind of allergy. I, I feel it's um, in terms of drinking tea. You can't drink some kind of tea. There's, there's tea allergy or something like this. Um, would you? Huh? It's you? Oh, okay. Yes. So do you want to drink all these other kinds of teas? Linda tea. And this has been all your life. Father, we just bless Yana tonight. Father, we just thank you. We thank you, God, that, Lord, you come and address this problem with acid even in his, his stomach tonight, Father. We thank you for your anointing that breaks the yoke right now. And I thank you, Lord, that you set him free. And, God, we thank you that you heal this even in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for the anointing that just heals his body right now and, and just sets him free from every yoke and every stronghold that's been passed down to him. Amen. And I just see um, that the is in their hands on your stomach every day. Okay. And just proclaim the healing power of Jesus. You're going to see that this thing is going to disappear. Um, it's going to go. I just see you praying over your stomach and just um, imparting the power of God to your stomach, releasing the power of God, and it's just going to go. It's going to go. And so, Father, we thank you tonight for faith that rises up within him, for your healing power that rises up within him. And we thank you, Lord. We call this done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Okay. got a lot of ailments and he's asking for more. Okay, now he's asking for lots more healing. I, I don't flow in that kind of inventing. Okay, so I would encourage you to go to an evangelist um, like Daniel Kalenda or somebody who flows in that, those kind of gifts of healings. Okay, because you'll be disappointed. I have Okay. Every time she drinks chocolate tea, she starts to throw up. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you that you come now.
that you just heal her digestive system in Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you. We thank you right now. Every ulcer that she has, um, I, I don't know why, but I see ulcers in your stomach because of anxiety and worry. And I speak to this in the name of Jesus, and I thank you, Lord, that her healing comes forth now in Jesus' mighty name. So, Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. And, and just as you call healing in, as you just call the healing in, you're going to see what God is going to do. Amen? As you just call it in, as you just call it in, as you release um, the gospel of truth into the spirit. Okay? Healing is going to come forth. All right. We have to lay hands on our body every day. Okay. All right. Hello. What's your name? Akshi. And she's got an allergy? Oh, to see the act, yeah. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Father, tonight we just thank you. Do you believe that Jesus is going to heal you? Yes. So I want you to say, say thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for um, setting me free. Thank you for setting me free. And thank you that I will be able to eat normally. Thank you that I will be able to eat normally. Normal bread. Normal bread and cakes. Bread and cakes. Thank you, Jesus. So, Father, we thank you right now that you just come and that you meet her need. And I break the curse of this allergy right now in Jesus' name. I revoke it and I reverse it in the name of Jesus. And I speak to these cells and I say be healed. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you for freedom. Thank you that you're going to use this young woman. Mightily, this young girl's got a mighty prophetic call on her life. Amen. And she's going to see many, many things in the days of you. Amen. And she's going to be on the forefront of, of a very strong prophetic flow, in, even in the days of you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. It's time for the next generation to rise up. Amen. God is going to start to use children in a, in a way that um, is going to absolutely astound us going forward. Look at all these children coming forward. You see? Okay. What can I pray for you for? Your teeth. Oh, tea. 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 Tea or tea? Teeth. Your teeth. You've got a problem with your teeth. Two. Cold. 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 Thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you said we must ask and we will receive. What do you and so, Lord, I thank you today that Michael is asking. And therefore, Michael is going to receive. And so, whatever the, the root of this thing is, in Jesus' mighty name, I break the power of it right now. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you that you come and that you set him free right now. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you heal these nerve endings, Lord. Father, we thank you right now, Lord. That you straighten this condition out in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I thank you that you're even going to use Michael to lay hands on others. Amen. I see you being part of a, a, a children's prophetic healing team in the future, Michael. God is going to use you. I see many young people, even adults, that you're going to lay hands on. And you're going to pray for healing and you're going to prophesy over them. So, Father, we release him today, Lord. We thank you for your hand upon him, Lord. We thank you. And when you lie awake at night on your bed, you just say, say in faith, just say, Jesus, thank you for healing my teeth. Jesus, thank you for healing my teeth. And as you're just thanking him, you're going to see how God is going to touch you and how um, healing is going to flow through your body. But the, the word Jesus is giving me for you is saying, just thank him each night. 
thank him as you lie on your bed. Um, you're thanking him. Um, my teeth are being healed. Jesus, you are touching my teeth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You see, sometimes um, miracles are instant. Other times they're not. Because he, God wants us to grow in our faith. In drawing that miracle from the spirit into the natural. See, if we don't use our faith, um, we never um, grow in it, never get stronger. So the more faith you use and the more you trust Him, the grace of the miracles He will give you. It's not God's will to always heal instantly, especially the believer. Because He wants to strengthen our faith. For the unbeliever, yes, He'll bring miracles. But he wants to strengthen our faith. See, through faith and patience, we inherit the kingdom of God. Ah, oh, what's your name? Berka. And what can I pray for you, Berka? You have diabetes. Gee, you know, my nephew's also got diabetes. But we're going to believe tonight. So everyone here has got diabetes. We're going to believe there are also others here that have got diabetes. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for Berka and we thank you for everyone seated here tonight who's got diabetes. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I revoke this curse of diabetes and where this thing has come in, in Jesus' name. And I command healing over his pancreas right now in the name of Jesus. We command health and healing. We command his blood sugars to be um, balanced even in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for his insulin levels to come right and to come to healing power in Jesus' name. And we say to you, no longer will you remain in this body. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. And I just see you as he tests his blood every day, you're going to begin to see less and less insulin is going to be needed. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you right now. We call for that miracle over his life. And we revert the thing and it will no longer continue in the bloodline. In Jesus' mighty name. We praise you and we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I want you as well just to thank Jesus every day, okay? Thank Him every day. Okay. Who's next? You help me. Yeah. Yes, okay. For the surgery, yes. Okay. You're waiting for the call from the hospital. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just bless our sister tonight. And Lord, we just thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we ask you to strengthen this knee, Lord. Father, we just ask you to strengthen this knee, Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. Mm. Um, I just, you know, I, I get the sense that you're not going to have to go, go for this operation. And um, that's the feeling I'm getting. And, and I feel that the Lord is saying to you, don't accept this condition in your knee. Don't accept it. Don't accept it. Don't accept it. But rise up and speak to the knee like the mountain was spoken to. Rise up and speak to the knee. Command healing over your body. Father, we thank you tonight. We just thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. You know, I, I, you can be seated. You know, sometimes we just accept all these conditions. We don't have to accept them. And, and 
when headaches come against us, when physical ailments come against us, we have to speak to our bodies and say, you will be strengthened in the power of the Holy Spirit today. You know, I have a, a very, very um, heavy schedule. I'm traveling around the world all the time. I'm, oh, I'm doing so many things and my body has to be strong. And of late, the enemy has been bringing things against me. You know, even when I came here, I got in the car, my husband took me to the airport, and I had a migraine and I was vomiting. And I thought, what is this? And I just began to speak to my body and I said, I'm not accepting this. I'm, I have a mission and I'm going. Amen. And you know, when I went through passport, suddenly this vomiting just left me. Amen. You see, we accept things. This is what I feel the Lord is saying. We just accept too much that the enemy wants to put on us. Yeah. We've got to speak to our bodies. We've got to say, body, you come under the subjection of the Lord Jesus Christ today. Speak to your body and command healing power over it. Speak to your knee and say you will submit to the word of God. Okay, I'm giving you all a bit of a lecture here, but uh, teaching. Yes. Right for employment. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just watch your name. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for Kevin tonight. And God is just saying to you that he will make a way where there seems to be no way. God is going to open doors and the Lord is saying to you that it doesn't depend on your history. Amen. Or what you, what's happened in the past. The Lord's saying he's bringing a new day. He's bringing a new day. And God is going to give you favor. Amen. And so, Father, we just thank you. Lord, I thank you that faith rises up in him to 